and that has lots of data in it. So I would recommend you, and we will put the info, or at least the link uh, for you on the website so that you can study those data. But I'm not going to speak too much about data. In order, yes, please, the next one. In order to tackle all these things, all these major challenges, um, we've he heard already a lot about mainstreaming gender in, our, in not only our own work, but in the work of those who are drafting and developing our policies, our studies, our research. We have to make sure that they are not only beneficial to both men and women, but do enhance and do not hinder gender equality, and finally, that they are effective, because one of our, um, of our propositions is that uh, if you don't take into account the specific roles of women and men, then your policies won't work out very well. And it's more, we've heard this, this morning already, it's more than adding a women's or a gender equality com component in our work. It goes beyond women's participation, but it brings in, Lorena mentioned it, knowledge, experiences, interests of women and men, and finally, it will change the agenda itself. Or like Bella Apsuk, the founder, one of the founding members with Wangari Matai of uh, We Do Once said, we don't want, we women don't want to be mainstreamed into a polluted stream. We want the stream to be clean and healthy. So we want the stream, the agenda, and its actions to be beneficial to the environment, but also to people, present and future generations. Next one, please. Um, if we look at how far we are with gender mainstreaming into climate change, and you've heard it from my colleagues already here, we are just starting to find ways to integrate a gender perspective into climate change. It's recognized that it's, it's an important element, and also Rachel Majanda, who is the UN Special Advisor to the Secretary General on Gender Equality, at the recent ECOSOC discussion mentioned the importance of mainstreaming a gender perspective, not only in overall policies, but specifically into climate change. And a task force on climate change under the interagency network on women and gender equality was established. However, the arenas, the, uh, the fora, the meetings, the experts, the researchers on climate change and social issues, these arenas are still very much separated from each other. They are not so much linked yet. So, in order to, we, we've already heard how that works out in our major framework convention, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Uh, Rebecca showed it very visible. We have all these conventions coming out of the Rio conference, the Rio conference which had Agenda 21 with a whole chapter on the important role of women and, and uh, along with men, but of women in sustainable development. We had the Rio Declaration which underlined that, and we had all these other conventions which came out of Rio de Janeiro in 1992. But um, we miss any reference to gender equality in both the UNFCCC and in the protocol which came out of that in 1997. Uh, the COP negotiations, COP stands for the, the Conference of Parties, are also an indicator how gender sensitive these negotiations are and the deliberations are. Um, in the COP 10 in Milan, there was uh, already a meeting of the network of women ministers, and I don't know if Ira was there at that moment, I think so, in Milan. Uh, but uh, there were some women ministers, uh, the network of women ministers of environment, who met in Milan in, 90, in 2004. And uh, that was also very instrumental of bringing together the voices of women and of um, women's organizations. The Gender CC network was formed at that moment. But only at COP in 2005, which was actually 12 years after the convention was drafted, uh, there was some opening in Montreal for women to speak up. And, to, and that is only thanks to a strong lobby and the presence of women and, and the UN institutions we, which work along line with them and the female ministers. 
COP13 has been a landmark in trying to change the mindset around uh, deliberations on gender perspective. But it doesn't mean that uh, it, it has been integrated well. There was recognition by some delegations of the inclusion of a gender perspective, and it was mentioned in some of the presentations, but it doesn't, hasn't resulted into a specific um, decision as yet. Recognition and modalities, like in CSD, uh, the, um, the Commission on Sustainable Development, where women are major groups, are still failing. Yes, next please. The debates which we see are always quite technical and economic and it takes us, uh, or at least me, and I have an, uh, an, a science background, but it is very difficult to understand often for people coming from, from different arenas. And they don't link social and development aspects into it. UNFCC decisions and mechanisms seem to be gender blind, and, but also in that I think that a link to sustainability, to real sustainability, is failing. If we talk about sustainability, it's not just about organizing the physical environment, but also making it a place for people which is better to live in, and we have to include them. And lessons can be learned, yes, from UNS, from all these other conventions, but also from the disaster reduction work. And I really would like to underline that. And actually, this, the paper which you find in your binder, which is not the final version that will be on the website, in that one you will see that that is commissioned uh, even by the uh, International Network for uh, International Strategy for Disaster Reduction. There's also uh, somebody mentioned migration as a, as a major element, and we haven't mentioned it yet, but last week there was, or two weeks ago, there was in Bonn a major event from the United Nations University, uh, the Environment and Human Security Program, and there it, it, the main focus was on migration and environmental change. And it is evident that migration all over the world will increase uh, due to climate change and is already starting to increase and that has of course major gender impacts as we know from all the different uh, conflicts in the world in which women are not only amongst the, the majority of those who have to, to fly or to, uh, to migrate uh, but also are facing major challenges and even loss of violence. We have major opportunities, and uh, both uh, Rebecca and Lorena mentioned them uh, in the next uh, conference of parties here in Poznan, or in Poznan, in Poland, we are not in, uh, in Europe at the moment, uh, and in, um, in Copenhagen uh, next year. So let's look at the participation element. Um, I don't want to go into detail, but what we've seen up till now as a part of the analysis that women share in delegations and as heads of delegations is still very limited, so I, I, I would like to just underline with Rebecca and Lorena, push your government to either take you or, or your fellow female members into the delegations. Um, the National Adaptation Plans for Action, the next slide.